Good morning everyone. Today is Thursday and I know I'm a little bit behind on that competition for the Phoenix flashlight. In this video, somewhere in the middle, Isis is going to announce the winner of that flashlight. She's going to enter all the names in. I think we had 20 plus comments on it to announce the winner for the Phoenix flashlight. The next thing is, is I want to start doing the home inspection, home inspector clip of the week. So if you go to our HIW website and submit your clip, through our website, I will announce your video on our page. But for this week, I'm gonna announce our home inspector because he found something crazy in Galveston. And here is the video clip of the week. Inspecting the beach house in Galveston. This is your gray water out of the sinks. Come do the drain. Of course, your sewer and septic tank is over there. This gray water is coming around. And it actually goes into a bucket. So this is a sink and a shower draining into a, a barrel. Excuse me. Oh, there's a water hose on it. This water hose goes over here out through the yard and drains into the Galveston Bay. That is definitely a violation. Alright, so I'm going to start this day. Today is a 1980s property. It's a little townhouse or condo style unit where they're attached together. Of course, we're going to find things on a 1980s property. I'll just walk you through everything I found on this one. And then I'm going to go to a 2020 new build. We will probably find something. We always find something on new builds, but I'm doing the stucco side of things and Warren is doing the main inspection. And I'll try to cover all the findings that we both find at the end of that inspection. So uh, let's start this day and let's go check it out. Before I even walked into the property you can kind of see that they have some flashing issues around this chimney. You can see they just keep coming in with some like elastic caulking here and just keep sealing it up. These brick, these brick uh, chimneys are really hard to keep water tight and I believe Warren said he found something on the inside. So you're typically going to write this up and this is going to be a problem area even if you purchase this property, no matter how many times you repair it. The next thing I observed is, sorry for the wind, um, but the next thing I observed is on the outside we have brand new windows. You can compare it to the neighbor's home where they have older windows. So they have replaced the windows, which is nice, but where they didn't install, they removed the weep holes on the front or they've never been installed there, but they also blocked the weep holes on the bottom of the the brick veneer too a lot of people do this they think that it's going to help remove insects in their property or whatnot but insects actually need a very very small hole to get in this actually helps your wall breathe and you want your your you want a drainage path for any moisture that makes it behind your property so this is something that i would definitely add in is just the weep holes it's pretty minor uh, but it is something to pay attention to and then we just want to help seal around the window a little better the caulking job isn't the best on this window one of the very first things we do is we turn on the ac to the property i know warren's been here for a minute and it's very warm in here so we already know that the hvac isn't working and we're going to write it up immediately so but even as a home buyer you're walking in to a property you're walking into a property and you notice you know it's kind of warm inside the property you automatically put it in your mindset that you're going to have to put in a work order or a request for them to repair the AC or even go in the mindset that you're going to have to replace it yourself you know that the home seller isn't required to do anything so it is something that you want to keep in mind that you might have to run into and that could be submitted in the offer you know put in the offer and you'll negotiate it down the line talk to your agent about that I just find the broken stuff but going back to the flashing here you, on the outside, it's kind of hard to see because we have these yellow lights here and you can kind of see how this yellow light is blood, uh, shining on this wall. But if you get a white flashlight here, you can see the water stains behind the chimney here and you can see where they have recently patched this area too as well. You can see the different colors of paint. This is an easy spot showing that they had issues in the past and they might be covering it up or they may have done a repair, but still this is a problem area that we're gonna need to let our clients know about. 
Stepping on the back side of the property, you can see they replaced all the exterior siding with new fiber cement board, which was kind of nice. Uh, they just want to add in some sealant around some of the fixtures. But also something that kind of raises alarms is there is foam underneath the fiber cement board and you actually need a clearance of two inches from hard surfaces with fiber cement board so you you want to try to figure out why this might be there they might have just done it on an amateur move but you want to make sure you pay special attention on the inside just in case they have any water penetration issues my guess is they just installed it like that because you have a nice overhang and you have a nice slope to the grade this might be from future high waters in the Houston area uh, I met previous high waters, not future high waters, uh, but in the back on the side of this dryer here you can see that we don't have the a proper length of the dryer exhaust vent. You can see there, there's extra footage and this will actually reduce the performance of the dryer and make an easy point for it to be clogged. You can just cut these down and have a more direct link for the dryer lint. So we do have galvanized water lines to the structure so I've talked about these enough in all my previous videos just make sure that you check your water pressure around the property look for rust stains and colors and you always let the client know about galvanized water lines because they do fall apart in the Houston Texas area really easily. So just like I was saying downstairs before about galvanized water lines now we have an area where we're going to write up, write up prior repairs. If you have an air, a problem area in the past in one area with galvanized water lines, you're going to have a future issue or they might already have issues. So whenever we write this up, we're going to say prior repairs to galvanized water lines and we are going to write our galvanized water line comment. But the thing is, is you want to prepare them, be like, hey, you've had problems in the past, they've done repairs. You're probably going to have problems in the future. You want to keep an eye on this and suspect issues in the future. You know, you just want to educate them as much as possible. Yes, it's not leaking right now, but prepare for a water leak. Galvanized water lines just leak in Houston. The next thing is, I mean, maybe everywhere I've heard other areas, galvanized water lines doing better, but in Houston, they're, they're falling apart everywhere. Next area is in your bathroom area. You want to try to keep this as watertight as possible. You can see right here between the faucet assembly, you always want to seal around your, your fixtures. And then you, whenever you do your caulking issue, remove the old grout or caulking and put the new caulking in place and repair your grout, grout areas. This is the number one area where you're going to catch the most water damage to your structure because typically this is ran every day and with a family. So uh, try to keep your bathtubs as watertight as possible and as a home inspector you want to make sure that you really call this out and educate your buyer because this is something that can cause issues down the line and they'll definitely see this first whenever they move into the property. So here's another view of that flashing that I was talking about. I've never seen this before, but they added stucco on top of the brick. This is allowed, but it's obviously very sloppy, and I'm guessing they're doing this to try to waterproof the brick a little bit more. And you can see uh, there's no cricket behind this chimney. Obviously, the rules have changed since 1980s, but you can tell that they've had a, quite a bit of issues with this this chimney here, this brick chimney. You got all kinds of grout improvements, caulking laying everywhere, uh, paint, stucco. So this is obviously a problem area that they've tried to repair several times unsuccessfully. So this is something that you definitely want to let your client know about. Next area is with your, we have a new furnace, which is nice, but it's obviously not working. It's 84 degrees in the building. And it's been like this for a while, but I always write this up your returns they're really dirty this is you're breathing this stuff in and this is behind the filter but also another spot is actually the coils you can see the coils are really dirty too from all the previous repairs they did in the structure so you definitely want to have this cleaned out and also serviced because the HVAC isn't working what we have running right now is we're testing the, the furnace to see if the furnace is even working on the structure Okay, so Isis, she's about to run the generator. We have 24 submissions on the Phoenix flashlight giveaway.
and uh, um, we reply to them all. I know we're about two or three days behind. How many days are we're probably right there, right? We recorded on Friday or Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. I so think we're okay. So we did a YouTube video, and some people got extra time. So. Yeah. Yeah. We did a YouTube video, and we said two weeks from that YouTube video, you have two weeks to comment, and whoever left them the comments, you can uh, have a chance to win the Phoenix flashlight, and we'll ship it to the winner. Yeah. So, all right, <laughs> that was start. Great. All right, who are we gonna get? We have Jackson. I don't know how to say her na last name, but he he's been following us forever. Uh, Lind Green, Jackson with Jackson Home Inspections. You won the flashlight, and I I'm glad you kind of won because I know I know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be creepy. So we're gonna send uh, the flashlight to Jackson, and uh, we will. And we're going to do it again. We're going to pick another tool here in the future. All right. Thanks, guys. Catch us on the next one. All right. We made it to the new build. We got all the hot water. We like to run all the hot water first when we go through to make sure there's hot water on all the fixtures. We will load test this shower pan to make sure it holds water. And, uh, yeah, so we're, we're starting on the 2020. Uh, the, the strategy I came up with with this uh, new build is I showed up and it only had stucco on one side. It looked pretty clean. So what I told them is I'm not going to really charge, I'm not going to charge them for the stucco inspection. I'm going to remove that fee off of the home inspection. And then I told them to contact me right before their one year warranty ends and I'll come out and test it then. Because even if I did drill through the stucco, which is not, rec I really don't recommend that on brand new builds. I might not get anything. There's a very high chance I might not get anything. So I've told them that uh, we're going to reschedule this uh, down the line, probably 11 months from now. And just, we could even put it on the schedule now if you wanted to pay for it. So um, let's keep going. As you see our first pass, as we go through, you can see all the exhaust fans, the lights on, all the doors are open uh, throughout the structure. You can see mechanical exhaust fan. We like to leave the cabinets open. This is just for the first pass. And uh, just you can see where you ran the hot water in the bathtub and closet doors open. And this is just a first pass of the property. Just us setting up the inspection, get a general location and survey of everything, document any visible damage we have and um, move on from there. You can see this uh, stucco looks pretty good. It's uh, two inches from hard surfaces, four to six inches from the grade. Yeah, we have one little issue right here. Let me get my laser pointer. But right here, there's a little bit of a stucco missing. So, you know, this is a high water traffic area. So water can easily get in this point and travel down the whole wall. So we would definitely want them to repair that. Uh, in that in that location our our weep holes are there our weep screed is there we also have weep screed along the base too as well the fasteners around the balcony deck is sealed up real nice but one area that i'm pretty concerned about we saw it with the drone when we got it up is in this location there is no kick out flashing where the roof continues and the and it stops at the wall right there you definitely want kick out flashing right here because water can travel down this whole siding and uh, rot out all the fiber cement board in this area so this is a definite area that they want to repair before they moved in and that's probably what we'll focus on most whenever we're talking to the client about this structure you can also see uh, they see Better improve the ceiling around the, the fixture. It is good to have a little hole at the base of, this, of the ceiling so water, if water does make it behind it has a path to travel but around the top and sides you definitely want to have it sealed up. We have overhead flashing over the garage door which is required to be there and it looks good. We have overhead flashing above the windows too and I actually like this overhang. It is a nice improvement. It keeps the water from running directly over these penetration points. I like that add-on from the builder. That's that's really nice. You know, when windows are the number one area where stucco leaks and by that little overhang it really reduces the amount of water that rolls across those windows, which is nice. Okay, when uh, looking at the condenser, you want to make sure there's a shutoff and then there's an outlet, which is on the other side of Warren right there. Uh, you want to make sure there's an outlet, but also 
We're not going to write this up, but I've seen it in other builds, but you want to pay attention to the amount of air that is required around uh, the space around it because this is pulling in air to cool the compressor in there and uh, um, if it doesn't have enough airflow it actually can limit the amount of efficiency your unit has and can make it overwork and actually reduce the life expectancy of this unit so this is uh, something that you definitely want to keep in mind but there's nothing wrong with this one you know it has good space all the way around it's not too close to the siding one thing that you do need to write up about Hardy is, it's actually in the Hardy manufacturer, but over these top of wood trims, it's required to have overhead flashing on these wood trims right here. So easy call out. The same thing that they install over the windows right here, they need to install it over these trim pieces. They did cut it at an angle, but that's not what's by design. By design, it has to have the overhead flashing. On every property, we'll test out the uh, water pressure on it. You want anywhere between 40 and 80 PSI, either or. It could be too low or too high. You want to make sure you ride it up. And then we'll identify where the main water shutoff is. And we like to take a picture of the gas to see uh, if it's showing where the gas shutoff is. And then also show that it's bonded too as well. Okay, so we're going to end it there. I know I didn't find too much crazy stuff on this new build, but with this new build, you know those little two things you know the the hole in the stucco and then that lack of kick out flashing by them getting that installed and getting it installed properly can save them thousands of dollars down the line depending on how long they live here so um, it is recommended to get the new build those little items will cause problems down the line and the builder doesn't even know to fix it what they like to say is you can't see it from the ground it's not a problem <laughs> All right, so that's uh, Chris with A Action. If y'all like these types of videos, please leave comments below. It helps give the channel traction. And then also write a comment what you want me to talk about. I, I get a lot of comments, people saying, you know, I like routines of this or this. But honestly, just if you watch these videos or just being in the field, that's where you're going to learn the most. And each situation is different. I can't recreate this situation on another new build. So just this experience alone is a lot. It speaks a thousand words. So um, that's Chris with the Action. Please hit that like, subscribe button, and uh, catch us on the next one. And I hope whoever won that flashlight enjoys it. And I plan on doing another tool giveaway in the future. So please stay tuned for the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.